hello guys welcome back to life in technologies channel and thank you for watching so today we are continuing with our huawei lab simulation series and in today's episode it's a continuation of uh, how to implement bgp advanced features on huawei routing devices so we know bgp had the concept of route reflectors the route reflection so in this episode we'll be focusing on how to implement route reflectors on huawei routing devices but before we dive into the lab we need to understand some few concepts about bgp so uh, we know bgp has to exchange routes so if you are running bgp within an as the autonomous system uh, which is a network managed or owned by one organization then there should be a route exchange between different routers so you've configured ibgp for example in this diagram you have ibgp running in s200 so these routers need to exchange routes for them to be able to communicate or for the services to flow from s100 to s300 with this implementation bgp has a concept we call the split horizon which states that if an ibgp peer lands a route from an ibgp peer then that route will not be advertised to any other IBGP peer. So in this setup, we have router two. Router two is sending a route to router three. Router two and router three have established IBGP peering. So with split horizon, it means router three will not advertise this route to any other IBGP peer. So router three will not send this route to R5. Similarly, if R2 is advertising the IBGP peer to R4, R4 will not advertise to R5. So we have a point of disconnect in this IBGP setup. R5 will not, will not learn any routes that are coming in from R2. So that is a split horizon rule. If you are learning any route from an IBGP peer, then you will not advertise it to any other IBGP peer and this one is uh, a mechanism that is used to control loops within an AS. So with this setup it means we have a disconnect in the network and we need to ensure that routes are being exchanged from end to end. So there are different mechanisms that can be used to solve this problem. The first one is meshed connection like you have meshed connection in your network which means you have IBGP peering among all these routers. R2 will have to establish IBGP peering with R5 and R5 also establish IBGP peering with R2. So they can be able to exchange routes like when a route is being advertised to R2, R2 will send the route to R3, R4 and R5. But the problem with meshed connection is the workload and the number of because of the number of configuration that you make you need to make in your network if you have a thousand routers you need to maintain so many peering sessions and you need to configure each router to peer to each other so it's not efficient enough so that is never considered when it comes to a service provider network or a network that has many routers in the live network so the second mechanism that we can use to solve this disconnection is route reflection. So in a network, we have a route reflector. This route reflector will be the router that is in charge of advertising routes to all other peers. So this router, if R2 is our route reflector, it will advertise the routes to R4, to R3 and R5 without any problem. So the route reflector is the router that will be in charge of advertising routes in the entire network. In this case, in S200. So when we talk of route reflectors, we have clients and non-clients. Clients are the router that are configured to receive routes from the route reflector. But non-clients are just regular routers, just regular peerings between the routers. So they will not... Uh, they are not clients to the route reflector that is so they are non-clients but then we have clients 
So uh, with the clients and non-clients, the route reflector will be able to reflect the routes within the AS. And then we'll have end-to-end -end connectivity. The routes will be exchanged from one node to the other. So how do you implement route reflection in a network? This is what we are focusing on in this episode. But before we start implementing, let's check uh this principle of split horizon so this is the topology that we are using and in this topology you have in s100 we are focusing only in s100 so in this topology you have five routers and r1 will be configured as our route reflector and then r12 will be configured as an unclient. So remember in our last setup, we did uh, groups, but then we'll be removing R12 from the BGP group that we created so that we make it an unclient. Then we have R2, R11, and R3 will be the clients. So to demonstrate the split horizon, if we have a route being advertised by R2, which is uh, a client, or uh, uh, in this case, we have an implemented route reflection if we have a route being advertised from r2 and it's sent to r1 and it's also sent to r11 r3 will not be able to learn that route because split horizon is in place so if we log into this router i will just discard the drawings if we log into r2 and display bgp routing table we don't have any route, so we'll inject one route to BGP. BGP 100, we do network, just the loopback 0, 2.2.2.2. You need the mask, it's slash 32. So we have advertised one route in BGP. If I now do display BGP peer, and now display BGP route, you see we have one route in the BGP. So this route will be advertised to r1 and r11 if we check r11 display bgp routing table okay so we haven't implemented ibgp peering so that's why uh, this may not be the best topology to simulate how routes because we've only configured peering between these two but if we check given that this route has been advertised to r1 if we check r1 display bgp peer display bgp routing table you can see that we have this route it has been learned in this routing table but this route would not be available in r3 display bgp routing table we don't have this route because r1 has learned this route from r2 which is ibgp peering so the route is not advertised to r3 so the split horizon principle is in place and it's working. No route will be advertised to IBGP peer if it's learned from another IBGP peer. So that's why we need route reflection in the network so that we have routes being exchanged between nodes that, that have no peer rings. Like we need end-to-end uh, -end connectivity, end-to-end -end exchange of routes between these uh, routers. So if we go back to our slides, so in this topology, we'll be configuring R1 as our route reflector. And the good thing with route reflection is we don't need to make any configuration changes on the clients and the non-clients. The only part that we are changing is on the route reflectors. We only need to make configuration change on the route reflector. Other routers, you don't need to touch. So we'll be configuring R1 as our route reflector and R2, R11 and R3 will be the clients. R R12 will be a non-client. And then later we can see the route exchange rules, the route reflector route exchange rules and how they work in this setup. So uh, these are the configuration. These are the same configuration we used in our last lab. We've configured OSPF, interface IPs, and we can verify that the OSPF peering 
sessions are up on R1. You can display OSPF peer. We have three sessions to the three routers R2, R11, R3, and R12. That should be four sessions. So we have four session OSPF sessions between these routers on R1. If we check, uh, there should be three. R3 because this one the, this is not connected to this so we have three pairing sessions to R12, R2 and R3 so once we have connectivity we have configured BGP uh, let me just show the BGP configuration these are the BGP configuration that we are using the only thing that we are changing is we are removing this peer from the group so we are removing this peer from the group so that it will be an unclient and then, given that it's an unclient, we also need to uh, configure this command of connect interface independently on this individual peer. So I can do peer 12.12.12.12, then connect interface so that the peering will come up. And this has already been implemented on the lab. So these are the BGP configuration changes. We are signing groups. Remember, we already discussed uh, uh, peering groups in BGP. If you haven't gone through it, you can find it on our channel and you watch it for a better understanding of these and even the subsequent tutorial that we'll be having on our channel. And these are the BGP configurations. As I mentioned, we'll not be making any configuration changes on the clients and the non-clients. You only touch on the route reflector only and you do it with one command only and you will be able to exchange the routes between these routers so uh, we can verify that our bgp peering sessions are up on r1 which is our route reflector display bgp peer we have peering sessions to all these routers now if i display bgp group you can see that uh, for ibgp group we only have three because we have removed r12 from the group so uh display current configuration configuration bgp we don't have any configuration for route reflection so if we are learning a route from this node it's not being propagated to the other nodes because r1 is not acting as the route reflector we can only solve this by one the meshed connection the route reflection or the confederation the sub -confer. So uh, we now need to make R1 our route reflector. How do we do that? On our slide again, we have the configuration for route reflector. We only need to, learn, to run this command on the route reflector. So we go under the BGP configuration and we run this command. BGP, the group, we are binding it on the group. So making it easy and reducing the workload. So on our BGP configuration, we will do this system and then uh, let me just verify on r3 we still don't have this route so on r1 i paste the bgp so now r1 is the route reflector in our network if i check on r3 this is r2 display BGP routing table we have a route 2.2.2.2 two, 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 two. on R1 display BGP routing table we have this route but it's not let me see being it's reachable so we expect the same route to be reflected on after some time the route should be reflected to R3 which is the next hop let's check again display BGP routing table the next hop is 2.2.2.2 display IP routing table uh, because this was the Lubac 0 remember it's reachable via OSPF. So one thing we can do is we can create another loopback on R2. 
interface loopback 100 ip address 100 dot 100 dot 100 dot 100 that too and then we'll advertise this network to bgp so bgp 100 we do network 100 dot 100 dot 100 dot 100 that's true so we now have a network that is not reachable via ibgp so if i check on r1 display bgp routing table we have this route it's now valid and best then on r3 we expect to get this route so maybe what i can do is to remove the bgp route reflection just to verify again i will undo peer ibgp reflect client just to verify that we are getting this route on r1 but we will not get it on r3 so on r2 we have advertised the route display bgp routing table we have the route on r1 we also expect to get the route display bgp routing table we have the route is valid and best on r3 now that we have removed it will take some time to clear yes now the route has disappeared because remember uh, r1 has learned 100 dot 100 dot 100 dot 100 uh, from r2 so it's ibgp it will not advertise to other peers so on r1 i will just reconfigure it as uh, the route reflector i do peer ibgp reflect client so it's now a real reflector on r3 it will take some time to appear you can see yes now we have the route coming from r2 to r1 then r1 now propagate the route to r3 and even r11 should be having the route display bgp routing table r11 has the route so as you can see now route reflection is in place and it's working okay and just to mention it again you only need to configure this command on the route reflector you don't need to make any configuration changes on the clients and the non-clients only the route reflector has to make configuration change so it's very easy to implement route reflection in the network and the other configurations remains we are only running this one command and we are able to have route reflection working in the network so this is how simple it is to implement route reflection on Huawei routing devices. Uh, thank you again for watching and uh, remember to like, comment and to subscribe to our channel for more upcoming videos. Thank you.